Hi guys, this is Hardy from Digital Painting Studio. Inspiration is a weird thing. It's this very necessary part of being an artist, but it can feel incredibly unpredictable and unreliable and can leave you feeling really powerless, like you're waiting for magic lightning to strike that will make your art good. So today, let's talk about that. Let's try to demystify inspiration from being this magic thing into something that is useful. Something that feels a bit more like you can switch it on when you need your work to be cool on demand. So today I'll be painting a sci-fi character, this big blue guy having this really human moment. And this is a good illustration for today's topic because it took just about every inspiration management tool that I use to even get me to the point where I could start the painting. Plus, it's always cool to just have something taking shape in the background while we discuss. Okay, I think the thing that makes inspiration so hard to manage is that it feels so random, right? I'm betting a lot of you can identify with these extremes of inspiration, drought, or flood. Sometimes there's just nothing that has you excited to make art. You sit at your desk and it's just not there. Blank canvas, crickets. But other times you're so overly inspired by something cool you saw or some idea that you had that it feels like a total overload. It's like, that's that awesome little kid inspiration, right? Every artist has some movie or comic book or video game that just lit art on fire for them at a young age. And it might have been dinosaurs or manga, just some cool visual that first sparked your imagination in your drive to make art. Like, this thing is so cool, I have to make it my own. That's a great feeling. I loved that. I love seeing it in my own kids now. I really recognize it. But this is when inspiration starts to feel like you're just drinking from a fire hose. It's just too much. And as adult artists, this overload feeling can turn from this giddy sugar rush into something that actually feels stressful. Like I have too many ideas, I'm never going to be able to draw them all. So let's talk about some actual things you can do to regulate this a bit. How to get that spark sparking when you're feeling blocked and how to manage the inspiration overload when that happens. Let's start with finding inspiration when it feels like it's just not there. Now this feels a lot easier now than it used to be. I mean, Pinterest just never fails for me. So that's definitely my go-to tool if I ever get that blank canvas feeling. It's just the right blend of randomness with relevance to what you're searching. So cool and unexpected things can pop up, but it won't be completely off topic. But I mean, I'm betting you don't need me to tell you that there is cool stuff to search on the internet. But here is my spin on this. And this is where I think I can actually give you a new take. Try to train your subconscious mind, which is where inspiration always seems to be hiding. I do this with music. I have a YouTube playlist that has a lot of really chill, non-distracting music that always seems to help put me into that zone. It clears away the overthinking, overanalyzing, art neurotic part of my brain, and the ideas just tend to flow. And another great way to get this all jump started is by just attacking the blank canvas. Super loose gestural sketching or shape exploration, just throw some marks onto the canvas with as little conscious thought as possible. Sometimes something cool can emerge from the chaos, but much more often this is most useful for me as a get in the zone act. It's like you're letting your hand holding the stylus drive the bus for a while, and suddenly I'm off. Art starts happening. I start feeling excited and inspired. So music, 
and messy sketching, great ways to get that art spark firing. Okay, what do we do when it's the opposite problem? When you have so many ideas, when your inspiration gauge is just off the charts, redlining, you're feeling overwhelmed, and like you have that idea bottleneck. Well, here are a few really simple organizational tools that can help to order this chaos and make things feel more manageable, actually get things done. First of all, make friends with the Notes app on your phone or whatever equivalent is easiest for you. When those ideas randomly float into your brain, when that genuine lightning strikes, grab that, write those ideas down immediately. You will forget if you don't. Here we go, the idea for this one. Uh, it says, sad blue guy with bloody knuckles. I wrote that at a grocery store while I was on vacation this summer and I'm just getting around to painting it now. So basically, write stuff down. It turns this cloud of chaotic inspiration into action items, something you can get done. Let's take this a step further. Put a date on the calendar where you're going to actually attempt to execute this idea. If you have this vague list of cool ideas floating around in your brain, odds are you will just never follow through, right? The old saying, someday is no day at all. But I find that if I write things down and if I actually schedule production, it just gets done. And the best part about that is that it checks that idea off of my mental list. It makes that overload of inspiration, the weight of all those ideas, the things I want to paint someday, just a little bit lighter. It feels like moving forward and just getting something done. One final thought I had on this topic is a specific skill that takes some practice but is really key, especially for successful concept artists. And that is the ability to mentally dismantle cool things. So when you are feeling inspired by something, ask yourself, why? What is cool about this thing? Pay attention to the shapes, the colors, the stories, the design language, the human feelings, that it is creating for you. Learn to disassemble cool things into its most base component part. This takes practice. It, it actually might be one of the most difficult skills that I am trying to develop for myself. But when you can do that, it's like these things become ingredients that you can use in your own ideas. So for this guy, I mean, there is definitely a large scoop of Hulk at the core. But there are dozens of other ingredients that I have picked up over the years and filed away, and I'm very consciously infusing them into this painting so that I can create a very specific effect in my own work. So let's use this painting as kind of our case study, like the whole inspiration to actually getting it done journey with this one. Um, as I said, this idea kind of randomly started to take shape just during an errand, the most random time possible, and I made that little note, just a shorthand thing that would help me remember that thought when it finally kind of crystallized for me what this painting might look like. Now that was really vague. It was just something basic. I just thought, you know, a blue guy, he'll have like cool muscles, uh, he'll look like he's kind of in a sci-fi setting, something that would fit in Guardians of the Galaxy or Ragnarok or something like that. That's about the space I wanted to be in. So then I wanted to get inspired. This is when I went deliberately looking for things that could help me execute this as effectively as possible. That took me to Pinterest. And I started looking for character art 
that had a very specific quality. For this guy, I wanted him to feel very human. That's actually a goal that I have with a lot of my character art, but particularly for this one, I wanted this guy to communicate a lot of emotion. In fact, that's the whole final point that I want this one to arrive at is it's weird and sci-fi and cool that he's got blue skin that we're clearly in some kind of a science fiction you know not reality type of setting but with that I wanted it to feel really human that's where the contrast comes in so this guy looking kind of sad looking at bloody knuckles I'm, I'm trying to tell a story that he got in a fight or something that he regrets he's having a cigarette, trying to just kind of reflect on mistakes that he's made. He might be rethinking his life. And that's where we got to this, this execution. I think I probably looked for some color schemes, some sci-fi design language to make it feel like it was in the setting that I wanted. But that's where all of the inspiration kind of came together and eventually got me on track actually painting something that we're about to finish here. That's it for this one, and I hope you found a few of these tips useful. Inspiration is a weird, difficult thing to manage, but it's also awesome. It's all part of the adventure of being an artist. I'll be back with another video soon. In the meantime, good luck with your artwork. Paint something cool today.